Screen Time Stories is presented by Pinwheel, the therapist-backed smartphone that supports kids and teens through summer break and every other day. Fitness and education apps encourage kids to stay moving and avoid what teachers call the summer slide. Special features keep kids on a set routine. Meeting up with friends? Just a call or text away with no worries about getting pulled into mindless games or YouTube rabbit holes. I'm Julie, and as a parent, I'm sometimes overwhelmed by the challenge of raising my kids in the age of screens. Embracing technology and modern parenting is a must. Our kids will log on whether we like it or not. So let's lean into the challenges and joys of parenting with tech while we learn from the latest research and experts in the field. This is Screen Time Stories, Parenting Techniques for Raising Tech Natives. Let's figure this out. Today, I wanna understand how technology influences the chemicals in our bodies, the things we have little to no control over. If we do something that releases dopamine, the chemical that asks for another hit, it's hard to recognize in ourselves and in our kids that there's something larger at play. We'll talk about tech in just a second, but first let's link this to the more familiar concept of gambling. I remember my first time at a casino. I was in Atlantic City for a conference and the flashing lights called me over. The penny slot wanted to shake my hand and I pictured tokens spilling out, burying my shoes as everyone cheered. In other words, the chemical of desire, dopamine, sparked up and made me want stimulation and surprise. At the same time, Dopamine actively suppresses emotions, fears, and morals. This is an important point to keep in mind if you're like me and want to understand why people do irrational things sometimes. I didn't go broke at the casino and I also didn't buy the entire floor around. I only won a couple bucks before I needed to head back up to the conferences. Boring story, I know. But for the sake of considering the power of dopamine, imagine if I was free all night. Imagine if I was at an incredible casino like the Venetian instead of a disturbingly smelly, stain-covered casino in the great state of New Jersey. The thing is, I'm no different than the mom that squandered her kid's college fund or the dad that gambled his daughter's wedding fund. I'm no different because dopamine floods my brain just like theirs. We are all susceptible. So now take this image of being at a casino, the excitement and desire to pick a winner, and picture an app designer. They get it. It's no mistake that your device draws you in. It's intentional, and the attention economy banks on you forgetting yourself and giving in to the need for another release of dopamine. The designers start by giving us a Goldilocks reward. Not too much or we'll be satisfied and stop, but just enough to let us feel a miniature win. Now keep in mind, this is monetized. The more attention you give to that game, app, or platform, the more the developers benefit. Now, we can all admit how real this is on a daily basis, so let's pull our kids into the equation. It's even harder for kids because their brains are still developing. When I chose to walk away from the fruit machine and go to my next meeting, it's because my prefrontal cortex kicked in, reminding me of the risks involved and the complexities of attending or not attending the conference and the consequences that would follow. Our kids, on the other hand, are literally not equipped to pivot from poor impulse decisions like we are. Think back to when you started making better choices. Were you in your mid-20s like me? It's not a coincidence. Science shows that this is the typical age that our prefrontal cortex finally develops. It bums me out that it's right when our bodies start to go downhill. It's so unfair. Regardless, let's think about the intersection of dopamine and brain development. Dopamine doesn't wait until our kids are in their mid-20s. It's already present. So dopamine, the chemical of desire, floods their impulsive little brains while their prefrontal cortex is still developing. That's why our kids lose their minds over something as simple as a mediocre candy wrapped in a colorful package. If I'm hiking and my kids get too close to a cliff's edge, I'd tell them to back up. 
and I'd probably do a frantic mom grab that only makes things worse. But of course, we want our kids to stay alive and healthy in this situation. This one's a little too obvious, I think. So I'm going to make one more example and uh, things are gonna get a little weird. I just wanna make a connection to help us adults have a real world example to relate to our kids when they get dopamine releases from tech. So let's say my kids wind up in Vegas. This is obviously a sitting on the shoulders, wrapped in a trench coat, fake mustache kind of scenario because kids aren't allowed into casinos. Now, if their impulses took them into debt at the craps table, I'd have the same reaction that I had at the cliff's edge. I'd voice my concerns for their well-being and I'd try to pull them back. Now replace their Russian roulette with a common device like a smartphone, tablet, TV, whatever. Our kids are little masters at accessing the features and mine can best me on pretty much any video game. This gives us a false sense or impression that they are masters. It gives us a false impression that they're safe from harm because they know what they're doing. Plus, it seems safer than riding their bikes down the dirt hill that they named Cliffs of Doom. The attention economy is actively fighting with our kids' better judgment for just one more level. The dopamine is flowing. The brains are impulsive. The device is a casino gaming our babies. There's a book called Dopamine Nation by Dr. Anna Lemke, where she talks about the four C's of addiction. There's control, which is the inability to control use, compulsion, which is the constant drive to use, consequences, meaning that we're using even when doing so causes us harm, and craving, the feeling of distress and desire when use is not possible. Want to hear something ugly? That last point, C for craving, it's just another way of saying going through withdrawal. Dr. Lemke says our brains produce a quick dopamine response to addictive stimuli. And after returning to normal, it reduces its dopamine production. That means it's even more difficult to hit the mark. So you have to up the ante. It's easier to quit casinos. Hear me out. How often is the average bear forced to go into or even near a casino? But what if we're stuck on something that can't reasonably be avoided? Our kids need devices for school and it's so easy to move the cursor out of Google Docs and open a new tab to explore virtually everything. So using our fully developed brains, we need to try to help our kids make better choices. First, Make sure your relationship is solid above all else. We can guide our kids' tech use by helping them set intentions, which apps they'll use, how long they'll use them. We can support this intentionality by introducing them to devices and platforms designed for kids' well-being, opposed to a developer's financial gain. Let's talk to our kids on their level about the reasoning behind our decisions. The concept of the attention economy is complex. But when we break it down into small, teachable moments, our kids will gradually gain an excellent grasp on how they can use tech to support their everyday lives instead of detract from it. And that's it for today. If your family is facing a challenge with tech, let me know what it is and I'll find an expert to help out. Just email me at juliapinwell.com. This episode was produced by me and I'll share another one with you next week. Just hit subscribe to stay in the loop.